you know, a lot of them are old encyclopedias. And so mm. you go in and you look, and um, the ones from 30 obviously are pre-World War II. And they talk about how, what an efficient ruler um, Hitler was, how he really brought the economy up from nothing, how the standard of living was better, how clean everything was. Interesting. You know, because we didn't have any of, you know, like I said, World War II had happened, so we didn't have that perspective on it. But. So your work is political. <laughs> Two, huh? It can be whatever anyone wants it to be. It's no, but the, the title says me, myself, okay, maybe maybe that's the disclaimer. But it's by you, so... Right, but I mean, it's, it's, it's about everybody, and mm. I mean, the fact that history is always changing. So are you saying that you are about, that you specifically, as a person, is about everybody? Well, we all are about everybody. I mean, I we, believe it. if we, we just isolate ourselves and just say, you know, I am me and there's no one else, no one else like me. I mean, but to a certain is... extent, yes, but to the other extent, no. I mean, we, all, we have to have that, that compassion for others. But, but this is about the I generation. It's about the iPod. This is about the iTunes. It's about me. It's about. But I'm not from that generation. Well, <laughs> I would like to see a shift. I think that. I think there is a little bit of a shift, especially with the suffering economy, where people are starting to have to rely on each other For sure. a lot more. I mean, that's I, I really think, you know, um, like with the community gardens and mm -hmm. things like that, you know, co ops in general, I mean, people have to realize is that, you know, corporation governments, they're just here for your money. They don't really care if you're healthy, if you're happy, you know. Mm -hmm. If you're a productive member of society, that means that you're paying your taxes and you're following their laws. Um, and they're going to make a lot more money off of yep. you if you're all divided up into small households. Oh, for sure, for sure. And because if, And you can't just borrow your neighbor's lawnmower because right. you don't feel comfortable doing that anymore. Right, and yeah, it's this whole thing of fear. You've got to be afraid of everybody. And, you know, I have to say that was part of the reason for my show. It's like, look, I want you to feel comfortable. I want you to come in. Um, you know, that's why I have the little kind of comment box thing, but it's, it's, you know, they get something in return, so it's kind of like, you know, I'm going to give you a little cookie if you do this. Um, but it's kind of to open up that, that line of communication. Because, you, you know, know, I never thought about how approachable your artwork is before. I mean, it's very, technically it's really well done, but then at the same time you're using this very well-used book. Right. And I can also, you know, I can feel it in my hands just by looking at it. And uh, it just, yeah, so that's really interesting. I didn't think about that before. Too. And so it's like, you know, I want people to have this connection, that you know, range of emotions. I love what you wrote here about your piece, Art Living Inside Art. It says, Art. Which piece is this? This is Better Age. Can we go to that? Uh, right, uh, right here. Okay. It says, art doesn't have, have to be something that an artist has created. Art is in nature, which we all live in. Art is problem solving, which each of us do. Accept the beauty of everyday things. Challenge yourself to view the world differently. Live within the art of the world. And I, I think that's such a non-pretentious approach to art. Right. And I think that's good, you know, kind of back to the sincerity, the sincerity thing. And I totally, you know, and that's... I remember reading for a while on um, Craigslist, you know, you know, art isn't for the common man, and this whole dialogue is going back and forth. I'm like, how could art not be for the common man? Yeah. I mean, if you're thinking only people with wealth can appreciate art, then you're living in a delusion. Well, I mean, well just the, the very idea of, of taking something art, which should be accessible to everyone, and right. an experience that everyone can partake in, um, and making it elitist. Like you can only be an artist if you know how to speak a certain way, right. or use a certain set of vocabulary. It's just, it's not true. I mean, it isn't. It isn't. It's, you know, um, look we've, at all, the, we've all run into people that are like that. And right. It's just like, oh, well, I wouldn't really consider you an artist, you know, speaking of us or our work. And it's right. just like, well, I mean, how can you define what an artist is or what art is? I mean, it's so individual. And I, I can't remember the name of. 
But that's the thing. I think people do want to define it because once you define something, you have power you over it. it. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. But I remember in art history learning about a culture in Africa that the, the women would decorate the houses with tiles uh -huh. and different patterns. And, and then when someone said something about the, it being art, they had left and said, no, it's not, it's not art. Right. And uh, you know, I think there's some other culture in Africa that doesn't even have a word for art because it's always... Uh, Integrated? It's yeah. always a, a functional object. Right. Um, and they make these ceremonial objects that are you know, taken and put in museums as art, but, but the culture that they come from will discard them, like right. throw them out in the right. woods after they're done. We're done. I uh, was recently kind of involved or been reading about different topics. It's Facebook or whatever, mm -hmm. but there was kind of this, you know, talking about um, artist statements and since the sincerity of it juxtaposed towards, and I don't know what to label it, but there seems to be a general trend with artist statements that are juxtaposed to what I would what I what I feel that like say your artist statements is very sincere, um, and also acts and also it, it acts in terms of self promotion of course, right. but it's sincere, and I think there's kind of like a difference between that and what you might see um, somewhere else that's quite different in terms of that it's not sincere that it's a, 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 a an essay long type of artist statement that is seeking to sell the artwork in terms of, yes, it's valid, yes, this is why you should, uh, you know. It's academically, right, valid, it's, you know. You have to have really an advanced degree theory. to understand this. And this is, yes, another reason why you should be paying attention to this work because I did this type of uh, research uh, within my process and that this is why this work is important and this is why you should pay attention and this is why you should ultimately as a collector buy this work and, and I think that's an interesting juxtaposition for me I, I tend towards one than the other maybe because I'm so more closer to um, the art work in the art world rather than sort of I guess an art academic right. yes exactly right. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, I don't have an art background at all. I mean, I actually have a Bachelor of Science in Interior Design, which is, you know, artistically related, but most of my classes were technical classes on how to build a wall, what you needed to know about, you know, electricity and <clears throat> a lot of drafting. And so, you know, maybe that's why my work is appealing to the common man, because it's from a common man's standpoint, you know, that's where I created it. I created it from me just being me, not me being some artist with, with a degree, not to, I mean, obviously degrees are awesome, and I'm sure my art would be better if I had all those skills that I could have gained <laughs> from taking, you know, classes with professors. Um, but at the same time, you know, it just, it is what it is. So how, do you, how would you feel if someone said, oh, so you're an outsider artist? Would that make you feel like, you know, like, like Homer why Simpson? Do you have to, why do you have to categorize me? Because, I mean, I right. could see some Well, and you know, like and honestly, I, that's fine if they want to categorize me. That's, that's their call. I, I don't have to conform to that and say, well, yes, I am or no, I'm not. I mean, I'm first like, well, what is your definition of an outsider artist? Is it somebody that just finds something? and says, okay, this is art. Is it somebody that doesn't have an art background that um, expresses themselves artistically? I mean... Well, how, how, what, are, what are three elements of, of artwork that, that turns you on and makes you feel excited? Like if you had... When you go to the museum or to other galleries and you see something, like what are three elements that are, <coughs> that are common to the artwork that you get excited about? I, mean, I would. I would just. I, I mean, I would just yeah. say that you know, ultimately, artwork that I really enjoy. There's, there's some kind of a personal connection. I mean, 
I love Williams Art because it's <coughs> it's very detailed. You know, and you have to be, you have to go close, and you really you can't just take it all in one look. Even if you stood back or forward, I mean, your eyes kind of have to follow around everything around, and like you know, there's so many stories going on in this one piece. It's more and you and you, and you, and you will continually. Yeah, I love this one. Yeah. Um, Could we actually talk about that? This has been a topic sure, that's yeah. been on me and well, Veronica's mind. Because, it, because I, I don't want to just look at something and I see it all in one. Exactly, yeah, and, and that's what I have a problem with a lot of a lot of artwork that's just like instant gratification. I look at it for two seconds, I get it, right? And then I don't receive any further enjoyment. Or it's just pretty, well, right? Right. But no, I want something that's. Every time I look at it, I'm going to get something exactly. else out of it. There's or it's the way that the light hits it because there's depth and then the shadows, you know, do something for yeah, me. Or do, I do you there. feel like people uh, kind of generally are afraid of work that is uh, information rich visual in the visual arts? Or at least kind of like, whoa, I don't, I don't afraid know how I it. feel about it. Yeah, they're kind of challenged by like it. Like a commitment issue. Yeah. Like they don't want to have to invest thought or time. Or I, maybe I don't want to see as a time. whole. But again, I think there's people that mm. like art that is pretty. There's people that like art that is challenging. Um, then there's a, definitely you know, a lot that would view... There's people that don't think art is important, you know, um, and so you know, obviously you're not going to satisfy everybody, and that's not the goal. The goal is to whatever it is that you want to express, that you express it, and hopes sure, that somebody yeah. will connect to it, and at least because it's not that they connect to it and they buy it, it's they connect to it and they can, you know, tell you a little story about you know why this means something to them or, you know, how they relate to it. And then it gets that dialogue going, which again, I think is, it gets that human interaction that we, we, we like so much. And I think that's, um, it's just important, that, you know, you have that human contact. It's not just via a text or an email or Facebook, that art really, most art, you have to physically come in to really experience it. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is the nice thing about the co-op is that the artist is here, and so you can engage them if you are inclined to, you know, and that's part of the reason I have a little comment thing is that if you are uncertain and you don't really feel comfortable approaching me, then you can just leave me a little note. I'll still get that information. <laughs> it's a wonderful idea.